collaborators in quite different areas, uh, such as interior architecture, which is one of our main um, work areas involving the rethinking of shops, um, restaurants and bars, uh, cinemas, like this one here is the, the renovation of a theater uh, we did uh, or so one year ago, uh, uh, incorporating the 4DX technology, uh, Korean technology, uh, in Filmax Rambiados cinemas here in L'Hospitalet de Llobregat. And as well, uh, we are working in architecture, uh, in, in, the, in the area of architecture, even though not as much as we'd like. Uh, this particular image is uh, the renovation, well, a new facade and, and some new offices for, for the municipal villa uh, uh, at, at the base of Montserrat uh, train, well, Ferrocarril station. And as well, we work, uh, as Daniela said, in product design, which is one of our most uh, personal areas of work, and uh, nurturing, of course, from the others and vice versa, in where, in where we have been lately working in, uh, with massive heavy materials, subversive approaches into recycling and reuse, uh, desolation, modulation, and uh, recently we've been working with uh, 3D printing, uh, which is a fascinate, as fascinating as it is desperating. If you have worked with 3D printers, it's, I don't know, uh, it's, it's horrible. Uh, and last but not least, uh, heritage dissemination, which uh, Daniela also told you about. Uh, we started, started working in this specific area in 2008 um, while we were students, um, younger than you, as I see, by creating Archivos de Arquitectura Catalunya, which was a website uh, that enabled us and other students at that time um, to discover local architecture, um, the one more near to us. At that time, uh, we, as students, we only knew about uh, all those uh, super mm, known architects and, and best-selling architects such as uh, Erzo Pendemeron, Rem Kulas, MVR, DV, CISA. So we wanted a, a more local approach. And that project, uh, with that project, we discovered the richness of the Catalan architecture built in Catalonia. And that knowledge obtained really has nurtured our, our, our studio and our practice. And three years ago, as she said, this project evolved in making a newer, better, and um, a more ambitious local heritage project for COAC, which is the, the Architectural Association of Catalonia, in which we are still working and uh, as directors of the project. For those who don't know, don't know it, we thought you, were, you had been here before, uh, but uh, we've been told that it's your first day, so you might not know it. Uh, well, it's Arquitectura Catalana Puncat, uh, and I encourage you to enter, uh, and you will discover the, the richness of modern and contemporary Catalan architecture. And I am 100% sure you will enjoy it and, and, and assimilate it in part of your, of your personal references. And, or simply you will now ask uh, that there is a curfew. Uh, well, the curfew is, is, is over, maybe. Uh, you're simply, you're gonna use it as a tool for traveling, exploring. Well, so every project uh, from the studio, despite its area, despite its size or typology, is dealt with um, similar tools and approaches. No? Uh, if you'll allow me to, to tell an anecdote, I, I remember once Elias Torres, which for whom I work, um, and who's a mentor and a friend too, and has had great influence, I think, in, in both of us, um, gave me some advice when, when I was uh, dealing with a competition for, a, for an airport at his office, and I was overwhelmed by it. Uh, so I, um, I, I asked him, um, I don't know how, how to do an airport. And, uh, and he said, he replied, uh, don't worry, building an airport is, is just as building a house, it's just a matter of size. Uh, thing is that at that time, we didn't even know how to build a house. <laughs> but uh, we have always had this, this uh, this thought uh, in our mind uh, that size doesn't matter, and, and after all, uh, nothing is so important as we, we thought. Um, well, by the way, if you don't know the work of uh, Elias Torres and Jose Antonio Martinez La Peña, just go and Google it or go to library because you will learn much more than for, from, uh, from them than from us or from any other talk. <laughs> I can tell you. Well, and of course, all these different uh, areas of work benefit from this multidisciplinary 
similarity of ours. Uh, but uh, in this talk, Daniel asked us to focus in, in the specific uh, area of interior architecture, and especially in domestic interior architecture, as it is the one the most related to the project I, uh, I believe you're working in, with, uh, around co-living spaces. And well, I have to say it will be difficult to talk exclusively about domestic spaces, as in every interior project, and especially in uh, our interior, there's always a certain search for domesticity and other concepts that this work evokes, you know, like, such like comfort, scale. Uh, so most of the concepts that I'll explain about domestic interior spaces might be able to be applicable to the rest of our work, uh, with certain nuances, of course. So what is our process when facing an interior architecture project? So before anything, we wanted to share with you um, we thought as, that as students you would appreciate us to talk about it, uh, how a professional studio leads uh, deals with the everyday pr parts of a project. Um, in order to have a quick overview of those processes that uh, an interior architecture project involves. Now they are so sort of natural to us, but we would have liked to, someone to, ex to explain them to us. So we start. <laughs> Well, these are by order the main phases of an interior architecture project. Sorry, some projects require, require other phases, uh, some others don't, uh, but it is mainly the structure we, we used to follow. All these phases involve so many different aspects and not all of them are related uh, into architecture. We sometimes feel like be, to be uh, bureaucrats, uh, economists, lawyers at the office, and sometimes, just sometimes, we remember we are architects. And to us, this has made us uh, see with some relativism our career. No, again, after all, anything is so important. So we have tried to establish an idea of the percentage here um, of architectural practice in each specific phase. Uh, uh, in today's talk, of course, we're just going to talk about the architectural part of it, don't worry. Um, and in this case, we will show you first, uh, before showing uh, all the domestic work uh, we've done, uh, a series of phases and processes through one of our most, uh, maybe most known project, which is Elvilla Bermud Bar, which has, it's, it's a refurbishment we made uh, some years ago uh, for, a, for a bar in Gracia. First of all, one of the most important documents for the correct evolution of the project is the detailed uh, drawing of the as-found plans for us. This is an early document essential to understand the pre-existences in which you are going to work and that you're going to modify, uh, adapt, keep, or simply tear down. Uh, it is from those pre-existing elements where our design processes uh, always starts. So this becomes one of the most important documents uh, in, our, in our studio processes. Uh, in some cases to rationalize existing spaces, in others, in others to stress the, the spaces, in others to enhance the quality of the pre-existence, etc. And it, at the same time, the excitement of this new commission and the potentiality of the project starts bringing constant inputs and stimuli. Uh, in El Villa, as a demand of the owners, both from Andalusian families, uh, the, the imagery of um, Andalusian things like uh, tiles, uh, this blue and, and white colors, uh, the cork, the sunshades, and also the the, um, the marine references, you know, like, such like uh, norais, fishermen nets, uh, boys. Um, some of them a bit tacky, I have to say, and with them plenty of architectural references too. Um, collection of it, and with the found plans and our heads full of ideas. Um, then it's where we start what tends to be the most intense part of a project um, and the creative phase of the whole project, which are the schematic designs. In this preliminary state, uh, the schematic designs tend to be ideas, isolate, isolated constructive solutions, furniture designs, intentions and distributions, or simply uh, lines of doubt. Here you can see like um, ways of putting the, the tiles, um, ideas for the benches, um, random, random lines uh, in order to be used. Those are the ideas that remain, uh, then tend to suffer a process of investigation in our case, trial and error, conceptualization. 
In this case, you can see the acceptation of the, the use of the tile of this uh, Tartabo tile, which is this uh, local uh, tile uh, square shape, half, half of it in diagonal painted in one color, half of it painted in the other color. Um, so we started working on the possibilities of aggregation here. And uh, you can see they're infinite. And then the, with these processes, uh, you, you incorporate them back into the schematic design, uh, trying to start defining more precisely the elements that conform uh, the new spatial conception. Uh, none, are still, none, are, none of these uh, schematic designs are still the ones, but um, in them, each of them has something crucial for, for, the, for the final scheme. No? Then it comes a difficult process, one of the, the most harsh in, our, in the studio, uh, about cleaning of uh, leftover ideas, uh, conceptualization, uh, and uh, an overall strategy. In this diagram, for, inst for instance, uh, you can see the effort of uh, deciding which are the, w would be the, the main ideas. Uh, what they develop, sorry, um, which is the lateral regularization, re regularization with integrated bars and benches, and a series of irregular objects such as tables and totems, the main bar, the, um, the main table, which are spread, are spread all over the, the venue, uh, such as it was like a expanded uh, boat or something like that. That's what we said, I think, to the, to the client. <laughs> Uh, and here you can see finally the, the definitive schema schematic design. So basically, it, it is a phase where we normally set the guidelines of the project. And from now on, they will slightly evolve and gain complexity, but hardly change. Uh, they, will, they, they keep always the, their soul and, and structure from this, this point, and they go evolving uh, with and this, there's this span of time where there's hardly not architecture at all, where you're waiting f while you're waiting for the building permit. And then you get back to work, starting with the construction document. Having had enough distance with the original schematic design, there's always some moments of doubt, uh, rethinking, reshaping due to new inputs uh, that this phase introduces. No? You can see here uh, all the doubts in some uh, Finding decisions, some bar decisions. So what before were simple studies of generic aggregation now become uh, defined elements that respond to space and to logics of construction. Uh, in this slide, you can see one of the plans for the definition of uh, the integrated benches and bars, and, and it's part of the plan. Of the Cartabo tile, it's no longer rigid. And, and response to spatial uh, conceptions and, and so on. Filling with uh, to a modulation coming from from the floor, and then it goes to a ceiling, and it, of course the work size uh, dimensions. This for uh, space in the uh, uh, and transition, and in this process, rising 3D is not only to, to see spatial correction, but to fully understand how things are going to be built. It's really important for us uh, to understand layer by layer, uh, element by element. Uh, action of it is essential for us. And thinking that every element, every piece of furniture can be rethought and, and designed is really common in our studio too. This way of thinking, of course, uh, give us many joys, but also many disappointments because it's not always possible to introduce these designed elements uh, in the projects. Um, but in this sense, some of the designs we've made, uh, or we've come through in projects like this, uh, have turned into personal designs afterwards. Construction so. administration. 
where in our personal opinion the architect's paper is essential. Uh, not everyone thinks it in, in the construction. All the factors involved in the construction uh, tend to think the opposite way. But, well, our profession is suffering an amazing <laughs> loss of credibility. So through our practice, through our well, uh, well practice, we have to. This is the, the site while there was well, the project of construction mm -hmm. process. Here you could see the main bar being built, uh, the, the lining of the tiles, uh, bars, the, um, the ceiling. And this is the result. And well, Mark's going to talk about our domestic uh, interior architecture, which, which is. Good afternoon. Well, having seen the way we tend to work in interior architecture projects, uh, we want to talk now specifically about our domestic projects, which is one of the main reasons Daniela and Elisaba invited us today. Well, mainly uh, in the refurbishment of domestic spaces, the client comes up to the studio with two gifts. The first, the container they think you can convert in the house of their dreams. Their dreams, yes. As you can see by the example, they call you because they need you. So on the other hand, they show a big enthusiasm and tones of what they call imagination. Maybe it's too much for us. So from mood boards to 3D proposals, kitsch collages, ends on our table and in your computer. So how to deal with, with this is what we'll try to explain from now on. So what we do is, first of all, we evaluate the containers we receive. And we think we can make a difference uh, and it will define the strategy to follow. So there are ones that are to preserve and to uplift, and others are, it's necessary to reshape it, fully reshape. So it depends, as you can see, in the quality of the pre-existence. So, um, here we have, or what we prefer to explain is how to face those containers, or how we do it, to preserve and uplift. So we normally try to accentuate its previous values, focusing our attention in a general updating through an epidermal intervention. Like we, we try to use object, designed objects by, by the studio, uh, painting, relocation, relocation of existing elements, trying to give a second life. Here in the image, you see our project, it's Madrazo project, it's, it, it's, a, it's a flat. It's located in a great building from the mid 40s on an upper middle class neighborhood, it's uh, Sarria San Gervasi, in uh, Mercat de Galvany. So as you will see, there are great dimensions for everything, for all the common elements, doors, windows, corridors, rooms. So as you can see here, the door absorbs a generic shelf and also hides the electric matter that was already there. And, and it's invading the common idea, for example, of a, of a door frame. So in the next one, here you can see all the, detail, all the details of uh, little intervention. So there's a big shelf down there that it's related to the existing radiator painted in blue as other details on the, on the flat are. This kind of interventions are repeated all along the flat so you can have the sensations. We've done a, done a work from the, from the beginning but are just these little interventions. So in the plans before and after, it's obvious that we didn't move any, any partition. The dimension of the rooms and the position of the users were already generous and fit in the idea of the client for the future house. So we didn't have nothing to say. So in the next one, most of this casuistry can be found in old dwellings. Floods in uh, La Champla neighborhood are very significant in, uh, and this typology was extended as we have seen to other neighborhoods 
because of the of the great space that they mentioned with no much jerky and favoring use changes in the screen our project for Tuvau La Jara Echevarri law firm that it's an old domestic flat well it's just a half flat so in the in the other one. so here you, you, you can see the entrance hall the archive two little offices the meeting room the main office and the closed balcony so in the next photograph, you'll see the, the detail of the arts and crafts applied on the landing and the interior patio of this old-fashioned dwellings building. So here you have a detail of the entrance hall with the main color and the preservation of original elements. Also the incorporation of a rounded window with a rotatory mirror often half open. Let's see on the blind core of the, of the law firm that it's the archive. So when it's closed by the other side, it's painted with the same green as the walls are. It's a kind of camouflage. Then another element, like elliptical suspended tables, uh, linear lighting following a folded sheet with an abstract representation of a cornice, of, of a cornice, yes, and to uplift the space. As you can see, there are all elements and just painted walls. So, but you can have a whole effect. Then here in the closed balcony, more elements to preserve, as you can see, uh, the glass doors at the end, the sliding doors near here, and here one design of the studio that are the Juanola tables. It's a furniture design by us that I will explain later. So, as you can see, giving a second, third, or fourth life to pre-existing architecture is an uh, interesting exercise, and it requires a careful review to join to join it with the new energetic and use demands. Here, just an example, it's a restoration of an old facade for uh, Ferrocarrils de la Generalitat in Sabadell Ramla Station. We did two years before. So now we would talk about containers to reshape, that it's the full refurbishment, and these cases are the most. And this is the reason, the main reason they call us. Clients uh, realize that they cannot change and cannot hang with that alone. So first of all, the legal part, the, the less interesting for us, but the most for them. Then technical, more or less, and then maybe um, interior design advice. So the client expects um, learned mantras, you know, like diaphanous, warm, cozy spaces, all the time. They repeat, they hear, they repeat, they hear. So also light. It usually ends in white walls, some good synthetic parquet flooring the most of the times. And this image is from our project in Almogavars. Uh, the Mac Pro is not included <laughs> in the in the commitment. So reviewing all the domestic works, we noted two main two main trends. So people seeking for a living domesticity, a place to stay and grow, normally a flat between slabs in an apartment building. That's a normal thing, people who want to live in some place and, and go on with his life. On the other hand, we can find some hedonist domesticity. So p it's people looking for speci special spaces, unique like penthouses with terraces, uh, ground floor flats with some gardens and patios. Places with an extra coin that can remember the feelings they had as child in their second in their second homes in the mountain in the beach so we think they faced the impossibility to achieve the same facilities their fathers did so they tried to replace these greetings with a kind of oasis in the city so was living domesticity here an image of almogavars the one uh, i showed before a middle sized apartment of 65 square meters uh, an apartment from 65 square meters for a family, a, a little family, uh, two plus one, behind the Catalonia Justice Palace near Tour de Triomphe. Then an image of San Pere Mitjà that did an old and small dwelling, 35 square meters in the heart of San Pere neighborhood. It's just to rent, it's an investment. The next one is uh, an image of Paloma Tiny Apartment, 29 square meters in the, Rava, in the Raval neighborhood. All the projects seen were developed on anodine flats, so all the efforts have been focused on changing this condition. So this is different on what we called hedonist domesticity. They have something extra 
that we are supposed to take adv advantage of. Then here, the Olcineas project is a great example of it. A big penthouse on the Sands neighborhood with big terraces on both facades. The pavement, typical, it's called, it's called Rasilla. It's extended all along the flat to lengthen the summer and exterior sensation. Here you can see that the relation between the terrace, the interior. Then uh, we follow the same strategy with the payment we in Faro project. This is this one you're, you're seeing. In this case, it's uh, with uh, gray grass tiles. The project is located on a ground floor uh, flat at the end of a long plot in San Gervasi district. Some patios are generated and refurbished to receive light and create exterior but uh, project, uh, protected spaces. Then the big patio with an important structural intervention contains the staircase to a little terrace above the volume. On the same hand, next project, uh, Providencia project has a special container. Special, it's because of the geometry of the sloping roof of the penthouse and a continuous facade pointed to the southeast, southwest, with a narrow balcony and a little terrace on the top. So now we are trying to talk about the uplifting of the art. That it's one of the main things of our studio. I think it's maybe the first commandment at the studio. Imperfections, contrastive, constructive anecdotes, and all this kind of stuff you'd prefer not to deal with is our fit. We always start with an exhaustive measurement, as information for us means power. So this is the first commandment, as I said before. So here you have the the main plan, the original plan of the Faro project. You can see two separate flats, one at the right, the other at the left, uh, separated by the lineal patio. So the client, the client asked us to join them together, and we decided to take advantage from the different alignments of the bodies. So the result is a, a wall defining the corridor from door to door. So from the door in the entrance to the door connecting the, the patio. And it's intersecting with the orthogonal of this plan. So it generates an interesting triangle and, uh, and mixing of the spaces. So, so here you can see in the images the encounter, the encounter of the different floors and a generated triangle working a ceiling and a shelf at the same time for the entrance. This is the entrance to the, to the main room. Okay. So this exploration of the pre-existent worked also in, Al in the Almogavos project too. In the original plan, we can see the typical case of the Champla Chamfra building when it rotates 45 degrees. Then in the proposal, we work with this specificity to define an open space between the rooms and the bathrooms with the with the living room. You can see where the rhombus is. The alignment of the parquet floor also worked also in this in this direction. So here are some images to appreciate the comment. Here you can see this element generating the the space. So then we always say we want to go uh, against the obvious. So it's true that if the container doesn't give us anything, any uh, old thing or any anecdote to hang from, we are decided to fight f against some banality just if there's some, uh, some, something to win. Not, not for fun, but some, if there's something to win, we'll do that. So this is the, the original plan from San Peramija project. You can see a ridiculous bathroom. Well, ridiculous. It's a flat from the from the end of the 19th century. So at least they had bathroom. So uh, also an ultra quartered space. We had to face to that. And we didn't want just to propose an open single space. That is a more easy thing. So all walls down, open space, put the things where, wherever you want. Here with two oblique uh, walls and the integration of an IKEA unit kitchen, the cheaper one. It's like three units and, and a half. Uh, if I remember, it was like 400 euros, the kitchen. As it is, yes, without, without the, um, uh, the yes. The yes, without the, the, the kitchen elements. Yeah, the construction of the kitchen, yes, yes. 
Yes, began with that, and we yes we took this exception to uh, to make the project. So we generate so with the position of that, we generated the more interesting vis visual lines. Was that one? Uh, so here at the at your left, you can see that looking from the entrance door, a wall with mirror is blocking the space and generating an entrance hall, while you are seeing a part of the facade at the end. Then. The other movement allows the room, uh, constrains the access to the bathroom, and gives some breath to the shower. You can see that here. With the position of the, of the kitchen, you open the main space, you give air to the bathroom, and you close the, the room. So we did the same on, uh, on Providencia project. It's a, it's a flat originally divided by the communication score. So the living on the left hand, the rooms on the right hand, you can see there are not very big rooms with a distributor, a little bathroom, etc. So we changed that, we changed the, the concept. Uh, as a, it was an apartment for a single. And we transformed the four rooms in a big living to stay, work, reside people. And we work with integrated furniture to break and define the, the spaces. In the next, here you will see, like uh, I was talking about integrated furniture. There's a sofa, tatami, sofa, tatami, studio, table, shelf. Is an example of how to work with this integrated furniture. And here you will see an image from the from the other side, from the sofa side, uh, to the studio and and to the bathroom. So we followed similar strategies on another kind of projects like uh, like a store. Here is, oh my God, Barcelona Concept Store. It's near here in in, um, in San Pera district behind Palau de la Musica. And well, here we had no walls and not much money. So we used <laughs> exempt furniture, but with enough weight to generate by themselves uh, like new situations. So the present here at the, at the left uh, of a big desk makes the deal of the whole, whole shop, also accompanied by amorphous geometries in marble. These are the two elements we work with. So then, wow, it's a classic, visual death. It's the classic among the classics. So next one, one of the main effects of, of speculative strategies on domestic spaces is the quartering of the plan, as we've seen before, to count just one more room to sell it uh, more expensive or to give privacy. In Olzinea's project, that is this one, we worked to open visual depth from terrace to terrace, also as a climatic argument, and making a thing that it's common and not very appreciated, that it's a corridor, but making a, an interesting corridor also. On the next one, same was mandatory in San Peramidja with uh, 35 square meters. And it's helped us in Ulcineas uh, by floor to ceiling sliding doors, which helped to, to define spaces or not. In Faro, it was not mandatory because it's, it's a very big project. But I, we think uh, that maybe it was a crime to dismiss the possibility with the visual relation between patios, so, so we did it. Uh, and it was very, very necessary in Almogavos project because we, they had like a hell room at the end of the, of the plan and that is now the kitchen and now it's receiving light and green from the, from the tree that is in the street so they can see the stations when it's autumn or it's uh, spring or summer. Then we followed the uh, similar strategies in, in our bars and restaurants projects Mm, here you can see Elvilla, I already explained before. And, but just to say, the more of the times here, it's not a decision because the 90% of the commercial spaces in Barcelona are tubes. So you have to deal with that and that's all. Then for the, for the next, next one. So here I think very important for the studio, it's like integrated furniture as archi uh, architecture generator. We think it's the most valuable tool in interior architecture as the container is given and is usually conventional. The question is how can we generate a new understanding of the space? So giving depth 
and used to the walls is one of the ways for us. In this image, it's the Almogavos project again. Here in, you see the, the wooden structure in the middle. It was the rainwater pipe. It's in the middle of the space. So we used the shelf to integrate it, giving some complexity to the relation between the pieces. So it was not a, maybe it was an opportunity and we, and we took it. Uh, next one in Madrazo, it's like just another classic, an open kitchen with a bar and a tiny window in the wall. But here, with a tiny window, what we did is to take the light inside, inside the, the kitchen and also generate we generate something unexpected in the in the living room. Mm -hmm. So in the next one, we'll see the the axonometric view of the of uh, Madrazo project. You can see that uh, it's painted in a in a light yellow. All the integrated furniture that develops the project all along the plan. Um, in the next one, we are showing Paloma. It's the tiniest. So as the client wanted the main, uh, the main space from the common pieces, we had to locate the main room in the old kitchen, that is a very narrow space. Mm, this, this super, super reduced dimensions, the proximity to the entrance door, all the things made us elevate uh, the ground of the bed to separate it from the corridor, but without closing it. So the shelf that you, you see there did the rest. So. And also, you had a mirror in the front, so we tried to multiply a little bit uh, this this space. In this axonometric view, you can view all the explanations I made. So you can see the original wall that that we we cannot demolish. So we work with at the at the right with the main space. So looking like like a main space for a 50 square meters uh, flat, but for a 29. So we did all the effort on the bed, the, um, the bathroom, and the, and the entrance. Then on Providencia project, we want to highlight the, the use of a continuous shelf to unify all the original windows as an element, because there, was like, there were like four or five windows related to, to each room. So when, when we demolish all the partitions, they look like, well, Anecdotic. I don't know how to say, but uh, so we we made this shelf and give and, and, and we had a, a lot of unit on the whole project. So in the axonometric view, you you can see the whole conception from the from point to point, and well, it worked. All the spaces are hanging from it, but they are hanging from the same element. So the next one, every, uh, every element is a space generator, not only furniture is. So we take help from, from other elements like false ceilings, flooring, well, many things that I, I'll try to explain now. So here, for example, in San Peramidza, normally while maintaining wood and beams for the whole apartment, it's the one of the favorite options for the clients and also for the interior designers. You know, for, at least from from 10 years ago or 12 years ago, I don't know. It's a trend and, and well, we have to accept that. But we think that it's better to decide when to take a look at them and, and when we, we don't do that. Giving value to it by escaping generalization. So in San Paramija, the false ceiling helped to define two spaces, the private one, well, the room, the, the bathroom, etc., and the and the main space. The difference of height talks about that. Same we did for Shankimeli, that is a restaurant we did some time ago. Here you can see the holes or cuts in the false ceiling that also allow allow us give some air and surprise or just to hide lining, like like in the in the image of the of the right. So these last two comments also apply for Almogavar's project. You can see a square, a cut circle, and a rhombus. Uh, pure geometric forms filled with color and, and light. Here you can see in the next image. Well, this, this work with the false ceilings are giving some playful thing to the, to the plan. In the next one, here you have the, the bathroom hall, and by reflection, the shower. 
So the colors and, and the holes are starting to be important. And the next one. And well, as you have already seen, also the color is important for us and we work with it. It's iterative in our work. So though some graphic application, the color help us to relate furniture with ceilings, defining uses. Uh, in this photo of Providencia, you can see that. The green comes out, for example, from the bathroom to the shelf to define the studio. So in the next one, here you can you can see also the kitchen with the ping taking part from this furniture. So you have two spaces defined by colors and the other are in white, neutral. Here in Paloma, we work with the cork paving that at some points turns into some furniture doors and the final also spaces. So you can work also climbing the, the pavement. And also we did in, in the theater, film, uh, Filmax Theater I already showed before. And we are playing with the carpet, climbing to the walls, defining with the red space, the access space. Then the black carpet is for the projection projection room that it's, it's uh, a requirement. You cannot put all the color because it, it distracts you from, from the film. It has to be strictly in black. Then another chapter, disruptive elements. That it's maybe we can call that against the diaphanous or maybe the erotism on glimpsing. So you show, but you, you do not show, right? So here, for example, is a classical law firm office. We made this element non-orthogonal mm, that, that fights against the, what, uh, what was established. Then in the next one, here in B, it's very clear. This XM element, that's nothing but an element. We don't have a word for it. Breaks the, the tubular view at Alvilla. Rejecting the two ways linear view and projecting and protecting the bar, protecting the, the bartenders. The porthole allows the control of the entrance by the bartender also and makes a wing to the sailor heritage of the bar. So we use it to protect, but it let you view and now is the most popular spot on the on the bar. First, we have to say when we started to construct it with bricks, the property told us to demolish it. They didn't want that. But at least they, one week after, they say, well, okay, let's try, let's <laughs> see. And finally, it's there and, and it's working. <laughs> well, they, they want a diaphanous space. Oh. They didn't want something hiding them. They, they thought it got the space, but this space has no interest. It's just a tube. So if you are doing that, you are giving more interest to the space. That's what we tried to explain them, and we also make a little bit bigger the hole and all that stuff, and finally it has a, a happy ending. We made everything in, in order to transform this tubular space into different, uh, like different spaces with uh, each one uh, some sensation, like function sensation, and, and until they, they got that, uh, it was impossible to do science. So I think, uh, if I, I remember, I think with Aureli we, we were cutting like um, cartoon, no, cartoon, no? cardboard, uh, one to one scale. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yes, to come, yes. We use a bit of color in brown. One to one scale. Yes. So uh, here in Faro, uh, a big. In the, at the right, in the right, you can see a big but thin clo uh, closet, not, not tall enough to contact the ceiling, but separates with some air the kitchen from the dining room, avoiding a direct view of the daily disaster of the of the lunch and all that. Now in the next one, you can this is a Folks Hamburger Club. Here we decided to take advantage from an old arch that was existing in the wall to unfold a structure with the same shape that also breaks a bit the space and the alignment to allow some L benches for bigger groups or couples looking for some privacy. That was also a big fight because the, the property wanted to be seen from the end of the space. But uh, we, we told them it's better to have two spaces than just one. It's more complex. Mm, it 
there are different kinds of people looking for different things. You have to offer more than, than just one. Uh, so then here is a, this is a render. It's one of our last projects in Cadaqués. It's waiting to the end of the pandemic restrictions to carry on, or at least we hope that. And here you can see like a floating element over the living that will work as a studio. It's a kind of Mediterranean UFO. So <laughs> in the next one, you'll see the image from the studio working again with colors to define the space, but it's floating over, over the living, as I said before. Um, on the same direction, another undefined flying object at Chankimeli. This one is, is constructed. You can see the lamp. You will see better in the, in the next image. So it's floating over a traditional Catalan bar paved with a typical rasilla we explained before. It's a three meter diameter circle that is seen from the street and domains the main lunch space. Okay, then in Providencia, it was difficult also to persuade the, the client of the need to keep the high shelf as a column, the f um, making a separation from the spaces. And surprisingly, it was easy to easier to work with a fake column. You can see uh, it's a pilaster on the right, but because the, the marble of this pilaster was from the grandfather, I think. Grandfather. Yes, uh -huh. uh, the the grandfather from the from the client. The grandparents had a house. The grandparents had had a house from Maturei Buigas Macay, uh -huh. and they had in the kitchen this marble. And I don't know, at some point, uh, her, her grandfather died, and she wanted to find about, about him. So, we thought See, so at, at, at with that. No, she gave us pieces of marble, of marble like 45, 80, three pieces of pink marble. So she said, I want something of my grandfather here. Think about something. <laughs> and we decided that, I think the last day, well, the, the, the week before <laughs> ending the, uh, the intervention. So, and uh, what we want to explain is that the, this pilaster, it coronates the bearing wall that the neighbors didn't allow us to demolish. <laughs> despite all the, stru the structural calculations we did. So as an ironic wink, we reused that some that marble from the grandfather house recently dead but it's just to say okay you don't let us to demolish this wall so we'll reinforce that we'll make a column here so she accepted we don't know how but <laughs> she accepted i think she wasn't expecting this <laughs> and now she's very happy, she's very happy. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> yes it, it has so now Luxury recycling. So it's, is it possible the luxury recycling? Isn't that an oxymoron? Is it not a contradiction? Can be those concepts be treated? So our personal approach to the product design has a little bit of this. Like I already said, it's a very personal uh, branch of our work. Uh, with that idea was conceived the look set that it's uh, looks and palette. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's understandable in English that it's a parodical and paradoxical interpretation of the use of the wooden palettes in too many interventions. Everywhere you see palettes as tables, you see palettes as shelves, you see palettes as everything. And normally not very well done. So here it's, it's like a joke and a manifesto and something to say against. So a marble palette with rest with rest, with a slice of marble. Why is marble less recycling friendly than wood is? Maybe it could be more expensive, but could be nicer at some points, cleaner at some points, I don't know. So working deep on the concept, we decided that each piece will be joined to the other through magnets, as you can see here. In a, in a way, like you can talk of a very relaxed exercise of do it yourself. So an IKEA proudness of an afternoon work with no effort. So you mount this, but there's no effort. It's like uh, luxury on all the dimensions. So before look set, we work on mold the table. It's uh, a hybrid between moldings and table. It's a table made from the rest of the moldings used in carpentry for, uh, for 
high class or middle high class uh, neighborhoods, flats or, or houses. We just needed 40 centimeters length pieces to join them together and form an abstract map with unexpected results. We made many com combinations. We constructed that one so the final table can be more raw, like in the, in the left, with all the mouths and its wood shades, or lacquered with any color, with, and you can take a great contouring, it's more defining. But the first idea to work with luxury recycling came with the Juanola side table, it's our first design. It's a tessellating project based on an apparently unstable geometry. In the image, different marbles joined together to form the table with no thick appearance because it's like, I don't know in English, in letter, like, you, you don't see the, for, well, it's, it's not 45, it's 60. So, Yes. Right. So in any case, in, this, in the next one, you, you can see we produce it in various stores, and if you can have more than one, because they, they are cheap. Uh, no, no, it's, it's marble. It's granite and marble. So, uh, and it's heavy, it's like 32 kilos or something. It's stable. So we need uh, this this weight because if if you don't have this the how much do you have? the cantilever make the the table fall. Yeah, you rely on that weight. So you can make uh, lots of combinations. I think the monolithic ones uh, are better to play with them because. You don't have the combination, just one combination in one. You can play with the others and make many forms. So, and I finished the chapter with the next one that are the Ricola tables, that are the Juanola's little brother. They have similar concepts, different geometries, and these are in two heights. It's like, I think it's 40 centimeters, and the other one it's like 30 height. So the name of both are taken Anola and, and Ricola from classical candies of our childhood. As you see, we always try to play a little bit in our product design. So Aureli now will explain you a project we are working on about um, co-working co yeah. design. Yeah. No, co-living, sorry. Co-living, co-living. Well, it started with a co-working, and then yeah. the clients changed it into a co-living. Exactly. <laughs> So as he said, to end up with this talk, and knowing you're currently working on in, in this issue, uh, we'd like to share with your current experience with the co-living concept. Uh, it's your first one uh, through a project we're still working in, located in Madrid. Um, well, some months ago, uh, we were commissioned to transform this five-story building uh, into a co-living building with around 18 and 20 uh, rooms, and also from another. Um, Uh, the current ground floor, this is the ground floor, uh, is very divided with small rooms, some without specific use and with very little relationship within, between them and, and the exterior. The image of a local uh, entrance hall, lobby, whatever. Uh, then there are uh, three type floors with two small flats per floor. Uh, the flats has, uh, one, one has two, it's a two bedroom. The, the, uh, <laughs> the, the image looks like a death wall uh, um, and the current penthouse uh, consisting of a single flat which adapts its room it's as best as it can to the unique geometry this, uh, the, of the floor which is this uh, cross shaped almost cross shaped um, uh, the spiral stairway going up to the And f the rooftop, sorry, and the current rooftop, uh, which is accessed by this this fire stairway, I told you, which is uh, several cross shape, and divided into two parts. One one on, on the upper part, uh, which is uh, this T-shaped uh, terrace, uh, which is by the by the penthouse, and the other one, the the square in behind. 
lower part, which is uh, used by facilities and aircon. Uh, So, this is at the end a transformation of a building from conventional housing into a colliding. Uh, but of course, completely conditioned and corseted by the position of the staircase, uh, the, the elevator, the facilities, the windows, etc. The structure too, which are not to be torn down and that completely determines uh, the project we did. So, first thing we did was a floor plan type research, which was essential especially in order to agree with the, the client, uh, which was the case. So uh, if we were to obtain 18 rooms in total, uh, we, could divide the, we could divide them into six room units, keeping the same structure of two flats per floor that the building has now, or we could divide them in one six room, six room unit per floor. But uh, so if we wanted to obtain 20 rooms in total, we could divide them in uh, also divide them into seven room units, keeping the same structure the building has now, or could divide them in one seven room unit per floor. Of course, the client, a tr which is a trust fund, uh, wanted as many rooms as possible, uh, but you can understand that every room we added in each floor uh, made it even more difficult to, to distribute the whole thing. Uh, even more when each, thing, when each of them, or each of the rooms, uh, had to have a double bed, uh, a storage, a desk, and a full bathroom. Right, uh, to have uh, one option of one six room unit per floor with common spaces in every floor instead of a huge common space uh, uh, on area in the in the penthouse. But we finally uh, came to an agreement with the client to go for the one six room, six room unit per floor with one corridor and one common kitchenette, and ending up with uh, this type logical plan, uh, a plan that had to deal with uh, so many ver vertical pre-existence I told you before. Uh, that were not keen to be adaptable to other typologies. So it became a puzzle exercise, trying to make each and every element we incorporated adaptable enough in order to have uh, apparent order and uh, homogeneity in each floor. And this floor type allowed us to concentrate all the common areas on the ground floor and top floor, as I said, uh, so penthouse and rooftop. Uh, ground floor, uh, our proposal for the ground floor. floor. We opened the lobby towards uh, the street uh, and all the, all the other permanent uh, Creating a bigger unified space containing the lockers uh, and creating tiny reunion spaces with these organic benches, you can see these organic shapes. Um, all these organic shapes allowed us to freely link uh, all the existing elements with new ones and direct mobility through the, such a small place uh, spaces. Uh, this is a new image for the entrance porch. Uh, you will see that the exterior interventions are subtle and those uh, enough to change the image of the building without much uh, sense. This is uh, the opening of the lobby and the integration of the stair in what appears not to be the best render we've made in our studio. Uh, in the type floor plans, uh, this narrow, this in blue you have it here, this narrow corridor leading from the entrance and the stairway to the net um, being this result. You might have seen that for the interiors we went for a three color palette, uh, the light gray for the flooring and walls, the terracotta uh, evoking the exterior image of the, of the brick building uh, for furniture and elements such as doors and ceilings, and then uh, a gray blue for highlighting elements. Uh, the, pen, the old penthouse becomes the main common area with a living room, two dining rooms, um, one of them linking the two existing terraces by opening new windows, a kitchen and a toilet. Uh, this would be the image of uh, the first dining, wor dining room towards the, the, the living room I just told you, and on the left, uh, uh, which will line to the in order to make it disappear, which is equally uh, This same space. Yeah, it is. It is. It's 
fun it's funny it's really funny brand called Kubro which is Through this new space, uh, we created the and you know, with uh, materials. Our way, our um, stairway towards rooftop, in which we changed this landscape and diagonal, and inspired in some way you Daniel know, by Caja Madrid's uh, Vargas, recently renewed by uh, our proposal for the rooftop, where shadow and, small pool and a small pool were, were required to be fit inside the roof. Far too much. But of course, the most important part of the, pro the whole project was to reach the right concept for the micro, for the full, fully equipped micro room concept. Uh, the dimensions of the 2018 rooms depended on the surface, geometry, and conditions of the building. Itself, and uh, uh, as I said before, optimized and hyper-designed minimum spaces were proposed so that the lack of space was compensated with the quality and effectiveness of this living. Our first references in our mind, among many others, were those that had already become historical paradigms uh, of micro-housing and co-living in our minds, like the Marseille Unit de Habitación, or the Flory Building by James Stirling, uh, which is one of the most amazing buildings, or beautiful buildings we've, we've ever visited. Uh, but the answers were not there. Perhaps because of a matter of size, these units were far too big for our case, and for our needs, or by excessive systematization, uh, something we could not do, such a refurbishment. Um, but we could do it in a furniture school. In so we started instead, we found answers far away from those high standard architecture examples, and started to look at uh, boat cabins. Actually, I had been in, in, in this uh, absolute hotel, and uh, I had been there. <laughs> Monastic cell. The upper one is a is a prison in Norway, which is the, uh, like uh, best, uh, the, the sophisticated. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> And we came up uh, with a room concept like this one, detailing all the elements and specifications in order to fit together in such small cells. On top of the door, uh, including also the all the all the facilities, desk uh, absorbing plan irregularities. Uh, Lower storage, integrated heat, semi open bathroom. Seven, ten until six square meter rooms, which is quite. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I have a lot of questions. Um, well, first of all, 
officially thank you so much. Um, that was a very, very interesting lecture. Um, and we saw so many things, well, that we can go through. But um, th there's one thing I would like to uh, start with. That is, um, that at, at some moment you showed what the client comes up with. And all these these images from Pinterest, and I don't know where they get this, uh, all the, the collection that they have in the head. Pardon me? Pardon me? Normally. Yeah, normally Pinterest, exactly. So everybody is there. Uh, they see a lot of things and they put all what they like together and they give it to the architect. So, I mean, it's it's okay. Uh, why should they do? I what mean, they don't buy magazines anymore, so they yeah. do this collage, what it has to be. as you said. Uh, maybe in other eras or other times, it was different because they came up with magazines, as you said, or and, and they don't ha they, they didn't have this overload of information, which is always terrible. Because and it cost money, so they had to to money. buy magazines with the scissors to cut, came with that, now it's very easy. With a mobile phone, you enter to Pinterest, you pick love, love, like, love, like, love, and they give it to you. You don't have to think so much. Some th yeah, sometimes you wonder why do they came to you if, if they really want the other thing, no? <laughs> why? Well, I, I, that's because they don't that's know where, anyone. That's where I want to go. They don't know. They have all this kind of mm, collection of, of yeah. ideas, and they serve architect but the work that you have to do is kind of get out of their system what is not necessary or what doesn't fit with the space they have or you know or with a budget or whatever so the first work is getting things out of the head and putting a kind of order into what you take out of, of, of what they what yeah. they really want and sometimes and to to absorb all, all these, uh, some of the these elements, in because you cannot say no to everything, uh, and 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 try to make them, I don't know, look differently or or, or at least correct. No? Yes, I mean, the, uh, I guess the the experience with that is that you see something and say, okay, well, with that we can work. We just turn it a little bit, or we, we, we twist the, the the idea they have, but we keep the the object or whatever this is, the image. And we work around that image, which could serve your new work. And you know, kind of passing through filter what what um, the architects want. And it's not about pressing or, or putting pressure on on a client and say, hey, we do this and you will get this. It's it's more to help educate a client and say, I know what you want, but this is not what really will will see how this will work. So we we give you a kind of order within all these. I think this was interesting to see, especially when we later see all the examples uh, that are, as I said before, very complex. And for a client to understand something like that must be difficult to convey, no? to say, oh, don't worry, with these square meters we will do something different than what you see normally. And you will like it. And I, I guess think. we didn't ask the question if your clients are happy with the results. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're Most happy of with them. the results. Yeah. Most of them are. Uh, we have the, our issues, of course. Um, well, as an example, I think, for example, Elvia really explained to Elvia that the bar in the, 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 the Vermouth bar in Gracia, so they came, they want, I don't know the word, barrels? They uh, wanted barrels, they wanted fishing nets, they wanted, I they, don't they, know. They, they, they originally wanted all this imagery from the typical, uh, Mediterranean and Almer from from um, from Almeria. Navy, Almeria, Almeria and, uh, yes, because the f the father of the of the owner is a fisherman from from Almeria, and their brother works here fishing in Barceloneta. So the, the most difficult part is to to take that uh, idea, which is not uh, bad uh, per se, and incorporate it in another uh, level of uh, I don't know. But no, not just a simple way they normally came up with the clients, normally because they are clients, but then elevate it and, and transform it. Yes, there we, we did like what's what what can be a material for for a for fishing. Like cork, it's okay and it's okay also for acoustic ambient, um, white marble, the tiles it's but it's really cheap cork. Yeah, really it's cheap. very it's very cheap. So you have the ambient 
and you don't know why it reminds it to you like a fisherman plays, but, but it reminds, and it's not that uh, kitsch scene, you know, like taking the elements, just putting them right. Yeah, this is one of the main things we do as architects and interior designers. Clients in, uh, like if you were a psychologist, or something like that. <laughs> really intense, but it's it's nice. To I think it's nice when the client later on is happy. Yeah, the it's fulfilling. Lots of the time, this arguings and conversations with the clients, uh, you realize also that uh, they open your mind uh, too in some way. You know, they, they, they give you ideas, they, they, they give you other options that you wouldn't. Cluster we, we made of marble, like the stone marble. Uh, if it wasn't for the, for, for the client giving us the, that marble, wanting to, wanting to make like a, some memorial to the grandfather, we wouldn't have come up with that. Uh, tacky thing with it. Uh, it's very interesting. I catch no? it's, yeah, yeah. Really it's catchy. Well, this is another thing that um, sometimes it's the opportunity. At a project or a more It, it, uh, it happens, you learn yeah. how, how to read the space and how to yes. I think the best architects for me, the ones I admire most, are those ones not who come up with a like super perfect general plan from the beginning, but those who have been able to transform their, their ideas uh, through the process of the project. Yes, and you and I think you have to choose your battles mm -hmm. with a client. Yeah. You have you have to know where to stop, where to give something, when to shut up, wait two weeks, come back to that. So it's a negotiation, and you have for that it's good to be two because yes, one day he battles. <laughs> yes, you can <laughs> the good or the bad police. Yeah, yeah it's, it works. It it, it's it like really works. To Exactly. And we not always do the same paper. In some oh. projects, one is more in charge, or the other is in charge, and then comes the other one to help and to uh, no to help to to to, to make a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Every day's office. It's obvious. It's uh, obvious things. We didn't, we didn't even know. We didn't tell you, so, and um, we made it as a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I, I don't know which uh, specifications you have for the co-living. Uh, in our case, was uh, like you have more space. You have more space, and uh, our client was a uh, was, was, uh, was fun. It's it's intense. Uh, Evolving in a in a very uh, difficult way. Yeah, the, the building actually is. Uh, uh, it's okay. I mean, much worse. No, if they let us work uh, on the building, we can make it. Bad and and the, and the rooftop plan. I don't know if it's no, we can fire work fire with the with the windows. We, we, you can work with many things in the facade. But not bad, not bad. Well, yes. <laughs> Barparilla. Yes, the, the, this this thing that, that says Barparilla, it uh, it was a patio. Yeah, but but, but it, well, really, 
It's a street. It's not a street. It's just a space between two buildings that is not defined. And in the in the register, they call it a street. So the guys from the restaurant said, well, wait. We put a door, we cover it, and it's our restaurant too. <laughs> so nobody said nothing, and it's part of the restaurant. But are you saying it's illegal? It's it, of course it's illegal, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. The whole building is illegal. But yeah, yeah, that, I was gonna say that. That's Madrid. Madrid. That's Madrid. Yeah, yeah. So we realized that because we was we were telling them because we were making a kind of, of legal plans and we were telling we need we need um, uh, because uh, there is no legal text about co living it, it does not exist. So you have to work or with uh, two star hotels uh, yeah. and um, and hostels or with uh, housing. habitabilidad housing. In legal text. Yeah, no so category, no? Exactly. Not yet, not yet. So I think the, the, the administrations Madrid? are working on it, but mm -hmm. they're still the <laughs> policy in that. Yeah. And now this, this tr trust funds are getting advantage of this situation in order. So they say in Madrid, you know, and you will know that here in, in Catalonia, it depends on how rooms you have and how many people you can, you can put in any room, you have like a common uh, so Occupancy. So with that, you define your common space, your living room. So Normally in Catalonia it's like 25 meters, 28, 20. It depends on how many people in Madrid. You don't. You, it's 10, 10 square meters, and that's all. And that's the common space. It doesn't matter how many people is living there. That's why we get, we could end up with this proposal. In here. It, it work in your favor? Yes. Yeah. Well, well in, in their favor. In their favor. Well, okay, yes. <laughs> but yeah. is very popular here in Spain, like you uh, have shown to us. Uh, what you can do with tiles, for example, tiles on the floor? Can you use in some flat tiles? For example, uh, if uh, in the flat uh, there is some furniture, uh, and uh, this, uh, the owner has limited uh, budget, what you can do, for example, Well, that I think that what what were you were asking, it's what we tried to explain at the beginning. When if the place is quite good, you can maintain the the elements and the furniture, and also painting. It's a very useful tool, I think. Stay. You don't. Well, if if they are nice, yes. But if not, it sometimes it's cheaper. It's very sad, but sometimes it's cheaper to put a, a, a synthetic parquet that taking synthetic parquet? Uh, the, the, this floor, the, the, wood, the wooden floor, it's, uh, this, uh, it's maybe it's 30 euros square meter installed. Then to, if you have tiles, normally the tiles are not, are not, uh, per, are not perfect aligned. Yeah, this yeah, in, in this case, I, I mean, our work with color maybe started a lot uh, with the problem you by by painting uh, with a different color, uh, with a bright color, or with something that would uh, not be the only do, um, face these uh, economic pr uh, problems you said, no? Terrible pa pavement. It was terrible. terrible. It was ceramic. We didn't have from any the money. typical from the 80s, I don't know, or the 70s, and and we just painted it with. Uh, that blue and we integrated it with the furniture, so. Uh, uh, the shapes we painted in the walls, uh, in order to thought without um, almost anything. So with no, no money, we, we gave. It's the same price to paint it blue that paint it white. 
No, it's real. It's Marvel. Everything you see is real. <laughs> no, I unless we that. unless if we say it's a it render. It's limited budget, for example, maybe something. Yes, because we decided to, we decided to no, it's a very little budget. This project we decided to do the minimum. You know, it's like we won't we won't touch the walls. We won't do anything except what we can control. Some furniture. We can send to the to the um, to marble the is not that. as expensive yeah. if you don't uh, buy it into uh, rated furniture. If, if you ju if they just serve you that a piece, a cut piece, it's pretty. They don't, it, there's not much work for the for the. I had to keep all this money we had in this project into these uh, elements. Uh, and not to do integrated elements, which is something that they bring it from the um, warehouse. They work on the warehouse. Has to be integrated. They have five days working, and you know that it's more expensive the day working than not the material. So that's what they do. The material is really cheap. The Price in increases when? Oh, yeah, it's bespoke, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We designed it for the project. I think, yeah. Well, all, 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 the, all the furniture is custom. Mac. Uh, <laughs> Jacobs and chairs here neither, but we did the table here too. Yeah, with tent, we have this idea of uh, find other elements than, than rated space. Sometimes you can go on with it, sometimes you can't, but the process of the project is much simpler to make it. Try to do so. And uh, as as Daniela said, if the, the clients don't don't really know what they want, so at the end, if it's a problem of budget, uh, mainly, uh, uh, another t another nicer table that you would they would find in the market, they accept it. So logical, no? So. Yes. It also depends on the effort you want to make to more than you're expected to, to get or not. In some of these cases, we projects we say we're not going to spend our time and our patience in order to do so. so Normally, the architects are used to do, here in Spain we call gato por liebre. When I don't know in English what can is the word like, you are giving a cut instead of a rabbit. <laughs> but you know, well, I don't want to explain the story, but it was because- Being worse a cat than a rabbit in this. In this uh, yes, <laughs> nowadays you, you cannot understand that, but during the war in the markets they were selling cats as rabbits because without the skin they look the same so you say you are giving cat as a rabbit and normally architects are giving rabbit as a cat clients are asking us for little things and we are giving everything so. yeah always 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 all the yeah. time yes i know but daniela has made a much difficult project so she, she would know more
Oh yeah. Yes, this this is a uh, many times an argument that the, that the client gives when it's like in this case the real estate it tells you well we don't know who's living here etc <laughs> but well m maybe he doesn't like white so why white why not another one maybe he doesn't know he likes it or she doesn't know so we propose something we think it's warm it's comfortable it makes uh, it defines spaces wait always thinking about neutral color so the, we, we don't have orange and yellow inside it's like it's like the it, this is a mdf um, and yeah it's uh, the natural colors it's this is white gray they are not very hard colors maybe the blue but it's just for this false ceiling and the yeah. and the opened um, wardrobe that at the end it's full of t-shirts <laughs> so it's it seems more important maybe that it is but it is chart I think. You also have to think that uh, in these uh, co-living spaces, how long people is going to live. Uh, and my, uh, my, my place, my home, which is completely white. My living, uh, I would make it cozy. But I, I think in, in these spaces that you might stay between, I don't know, one year maximum. My uh you can you can be a bit more aggressive or well not aggressive it will be, be the word but uh and dance <laughs> so it has to to be also easy on the eye so you see in the internet you are looking at 20 rooms or 30 rooms at the same time and this could be catchy you say oh, well it's nice it's why because you have the warm color of the mdf it's already designed you know it's easy to eat Well, we deal with the clients, they like it. Oh, nice. okay. With uh, a battle in between us. First of color, all. Color is, is, is a really, really a battle in between us. And could yeah. be. it depends on the project. I don't know, maybe the next one I say the other, the other color. Uh, I don't know, it's, well, y you know, it influences the, like that color and you went without him. Test with that color, and you want to apply it in the next project, but then he doesn't like it, or the other way. No, and five days discussion. Then, then <laughs> the client, the client arrives and say white. And that's <laughs> all. So yeah. most but of the times, that's a sentence. After all, yeah. After all, <laughs> nothing, nothing is, is so important. important so take it easy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a mantra we tend to. You take end. it very seriously, and at the end of the day, you say, "Well, after all, nothing is so important." Uh, well, that's what we think. Yeah, we have to be more open to to be modified, to be open-minded to everything because try to change it. Little private clients that for the domestic project normally, friends or friends of friends or normally in the span of uh, 10, 15 years, uh, and then it comes the other projects which are typology of, of, of clients that uh, the, the cinema halls. Architecturia, Josep comes, and then they they got apart from the project uh, at some point. The first is for refurbishment, and this one. Uh, I don't know. These guys from Madrid, because they saw our work on Instagram, they called and. 
but it, it sometimes it Instagram works the the social media yeah Instagram no sometimes works Okay. Well, it's late. Yeah. Well, I hope you've liked it. Thanks to you. Thank you.